First, giving God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We'd like to say good morning to everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and what? Be glad in it. We're grateful. We're thankful that God has allowed us to see the second Sunday in the year of 2022. We don't want to take it for granted. He didn't have to allow us to be here. And, and as we're opening up our service today, let's please keep in our in our hearts and our minds and in our prayers, those that lost their lives in that fire in the Fairmount area. Let's pray for those families. Let's pray for that community. Let's pray for that neighborhood and just pray that God will just be with them and give them peace and comfort. So we thank God for his grace. We thank God for his mercy. We simply thank God for being the one who cares so much for us. Amen. We read in Psalm 149, and it says, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in our mouths and a two-edged sword in our hands. Amen. But let us also go to Psalm 91, which reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him. Will I trust? Once again, let's keep in mind those that have lost their lives. Matter of fact, let's, let's pray right now. Lord, we come before you just thanking you for your grace and, oh, Lord, thanking you for your mercy. This is a specific prayer right now, Lord. Um, for those who lost their lives, dear Heavenly Father, in that fire in the Fairmount area. We're standing in the gap right now for those family members that lost aunts and uncles and daughters and sons and children, dear God. Be with them. Be with that community. Let them feel your presence, dear Heavenly Father. Our prayer is right now that you would give them peace and that you would give them comfort. And Lord, if there's anything that we can do over and above praying, dear God, let us be moved to do that as a body of believers here at Saints Memorial. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
God, we come before you with thanksgiving for the very gift of this day. We thank you for how already we have experienced the power of the Holy Spirit moving in our midst and how you have already placed praise on our lips and in our hearts. And God, we pray that during this service, you will open us up that we might even the more hear you speaking to us and we might be even the more receptive. God, we're reminded of the old hymn that says, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. And that is our prayer today, that you will melt away those things that are not like you, that you will mold us into even the more uh, creatures who look like you, that you will fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit, and that you will use us in the building of your kingdom. God, we are thankful that you give us another opportunity this year to serve you. And God, as we continue to grow in you, to grow up to be more like our elder brother, your son, Jesus, to be more in his likeness, we pray, God, that as we grow, we will be able to move from what we have known to what we don't know, that we indeed will be moving uh, even higher in you, moving uh, from one degree of grace to another, moving to even new levels. And God, we will give you the praise and the glory as we're able to uh, experience you in ways we haven't before and we're able to do things that we had not been able to do before. We thank you, God, for the very uh, gift of the angel of this house, of the shepherd of this flock. We pray today, God, that as he would preach the word, that he will do it uh, under your unction and with your power, and that that word will find a place of lodging in our spirits. We pray, God, that it will help us to continue to grow, to be more like you. We bring before you, God, those who may be sick, those who are in seasons of bereavement, knowing that you are a healer and you are a comforter. We thank you for meeting us today in this place of worship. We thank you that the Holy Spirit has full reign. And we pray, God, that as we continue to worship, that we will even the more have insights and increased understanding so that we will serve you all the days of our life. We ask these things in the matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen and amen. Don't mind waiting, I don't 
Brother Dow, I want to thank you for that selection. And as always, I just am grateful for, for all the ministries in church. But during this COVID time, I'm really thankful for the music ministry, thankful for you and the praise and worship team and, you know, Brother Jimmy and, and Barb Lynn and, and Sister Dow. We're, we're very grateful. And, and as always, we're, we're thankful for the yeoman's work that Josh and Dre have put into each and every Sunday and, 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 and the recording, the pre-recording, the virtual, and even on special occasions that they have been there for us. So we're very grateful. So I want to say thank you, Brother Dow, for that selection. If you can open up your Bibles to Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 14, I'll be reading verses 1 through 4, and then I'm going to skip down to verses 10 through 14. So once again, the book of Exodus. Exodus means to exit. So we're going to read the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, and then verses 10 through 14, and I'll be reading from the Good News Translation. Amen? If we can all stand in honor of God's word. Verse 1 of chapter 14 of Exodus. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and camp in front of Pi Hiaroth, between Migdal and the Red Sea near Baal Zaphon. The king will think that the Israelites are wandering around in the country and are closed in by the desert. Now let's jump down to verse 10. I'll be reading 10 to 14. When the Israelites saw the king and his army marching against them, they were terrified, they were afraid, they were, they were fearful, and they cried out to the Lord for help. They said to Moses, verse 11, weren't there any graves in Egypt? Did you have to bring us out here in the desert to die? Look what you have done by bringing us out of Egypt. We have people that murmur, y'all. Verse 12, didn't we tell you before we left that this would happen? We told you to leave us alone and let us go on being slaves of the Egyptians. It would be better to be slaves there than to die here in the desert. Moses answered, don't be afraid. Stand your ground and you will see what the Lord will do to save you today. In other words, stop and stand still and you will never see these Egyptians again. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you and all you have to do is keep still. Amen. I want to preach from the theme this morning that the Holy Spirit gave me. There's nothing for you in Egypt. There's nothing for you in Egypt. We're continuing with the theme for 2022, which is growing in Christ as we run to the next level. And it's interesting, we've been talking a lot about let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith but it's also interesting that if we're not running forward watch this if we're not running to Christ we're either stagnant or we're running backwards and when running backwards it's difficult to see and scripture reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that we may proclaim the mighty acts of him that, listen to this, that called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Since he called us out since he delivered us, since he changed us, since he transformed us, and since 2 Corinthians 
chapter 5 and verse 17 reminds us, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But I've also discovered that often when we are under pressure, there's a tendency to run back. We run back to people. We run back to places. We run back to things. We run back to Egypt. And I'm here to encourage you this morning. Don't run back. There's nothing for you in Egypt. Regardless of how difficult life may get, regardless of your situations or circumstances, I just want to encourage you this morning. There's nothing for you. There's nothing for me in Egypt. Even the disciple Peter often, and when Jesus, after elevating him to a higher level of fishing, when he had pressure on him, he went back. He ran back to what God called him out of. God called him out of fishing for fish and to go fish for men. But we have a tendency when life isn't going our way, when we have pressure on us, and when we're stuck between a rock and a hard place, there's a tendency to run back, to, to go to those things that God has called us out of, to run back to Egypt. And I'm here to let you know this morning, there's nothing for you in Egypt. So what are some things that will cause us to run back to Egypt? Pride will cause us to run back to Egypt. It even will cause us to fall. Proverbs 16 and verse 18 reminds us that pride goes before destruction and a holy spirit before a fall. So if you have pride this morning, if you start to think more highly of yourself than what you ought to, and, and the same with me, that pride can cause us to run back to Egypt. The second thing that will cause us to run to Egypt is low self-esteem will cause us to run back to Egypt. And that's why it's critical that you and me recognize our worth in Jesus. That we recognize that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. That we are somebody in Christ. Who knows that this morning? Turn to your neighbor and say, I know I'm somebody in Christ. If we don't recognize who we are in Christ, if we have low self-esteem, if we don't have any self-value, we will run back to Egypt. A third thing that will cause us to run back to Egypt and is rampant in this environment today is an inerrant doctrine, false doctrine, false teaching, not really understanding the word of God. This will cause us to run back to Egypt. So we need to know and understand thoroughly this word of God that gives us hope. We read in Romans 15 and verse 4, it tells us, For whatsoever was written in the past, watch this, was written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. This word will help us not to run back to Egypt. This word of God will confirm for us that there's nothing for you and me in Egypt. And fourthly, and this is probably the most common one, and we have to be careful and why we need to know who we are in Christ. Fear will cause us to run back to Egypt. As I said earlier, if you're not running forward, you're either stagnant or running backwards. But fear will cause us to run back to Egypt. And we need to know without a shadow of a doubt 
that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So I simply stopped by this morning to encourage you, don't run back. There's nothing for you in Egypt. Egypt, for some, may be a vial. Don't run back. Egypt, for some, may be a bottle. Don't run back. Egypt, for others, may be gambling, may be an immoral relationship. Don't run back to it. Egypt may be chasing an ungodly lifestyle. Egypt may be gossiping. Egypt may be the love of money. But I want to encourage you this morning. There's nothing for you in Egypt. Don't go back. There's nothing for you in a vial. There's nothing for you in a bottle. There's nothing for you in gambling. There's nothing for you in moral relationships. There's nothing for you in chasing an ungodly lifestyle. There's nothing for you in gossiping. There's nothing for you in the love of money. So don't go back to Egypt. Don't run back to whatever your Egypt is. There's nothing there for you. And it's interesting. There's also a tendency to slip back into darkness. And in order not to run back, in order not to slip into darkness, watch this. When I say slip, Slip is when we ask the question, how did I get here? Did anybody ever ask themselves that question? Satan is very subtle. And then what happens in, in order not to run back, in order not to slip into darkness, because it can happen just like that. You start to say, wow, I never thought I would be here. How did I get here? We must be able to recognize God for who he is. If you don't want to run back to Egypt, if you don't want to slip back into darkness, we need to recognize God for who he is. For God, he's a wheel within a wheel. God, he's help in a time of trouble. God, he's an anchor in the midst of a storm. Recognize that God is our provider, our protector. God is the power. We need to recognize that he said, I am that I am. When we recognize that he has said, I am the bread of life. When we recognize that he said, I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. When we recognize who he is, when he says, I am that I am, that may help us not want to run back. That may help us want to not slip back into darkness. And when you look at this book of Exodus, as I said, Exodus simply means to exit. We learn about the bondage of God's people and how they were enslaved to build supply cities of Python and Ramses. We learn how they were mistreated, misused, abused, beaten, felt abandoned, hungry, thirsty. They had poor housing conditions. They had no clinical care. But how they prayed and prayed for a deliverer. And God sent them Moses. And then after plague, after plague on Egypt that God sent, Pharaoh finally released the Israelites. But let's look first at verses 2 and verse 3. That was simply some, some background. It says, tell the Israelites to turn back and camp in front of Pi Hiaroth between Migdal and the Red Sea near Baal Sephon. The king will think that the Israelites are wandering around in the country and are closed in by the desert. The first point, if you're taking notes, 
is that sometimes we'll have situations we don't understand. We'll be placed in situations that we don't understand. I'm sure the people thought that God had set them up for an ambush. The Lord directed the people to Pi Hiaroth, somewhere west of the Red Sea. This made escape seem impossible. They will be stuck between a rock and a hard place. They'll be stuck between the Egyptians chasing them and the Red Sea in front of them. This made the escape seem impossible. And this was exactly what God wanted Pharaoh to believe. Let me say this to you. If you're in the will of God, simply trust God. I said it before, even if it doesn't make sense, God knows what he's doing. God told Moses to lead Israel in a way that seemed confused. But God told Moses and Israel to do something that looked confused because God would gain honor over Pharaoh. Aren't you glad this morning? Come on, somebody ought to say amen. That God's ways aren't our ways. Aren't you glad this morning that God's thoughts aren't our thoughts? Sometimes he places us in situations in order for us to learn how to trust him. Sometimes he places us in situations so we can increase our faith. Sometimes he places us in situations where we have nobody else to turn to but God himself. Have you ever been there before? I know I have. He placed me in some situations. I couldn't turn to my mom. I couldn't turn to my dad. I couldn't turn to the church. I couldn't turn to my family. I couldn't turn to my job. The only one I could turn to was Jesus Christ. And every now and then, he'll put us in a situation like that. And this is the situation the Israelites were in. So in verses 2 and 3, a situation that they didn't understand. But then verses 4 to 10, you can read that when you get a chance. Pharaoh sought after the Israelites. Pharaoh started chasing and coming after the Israelites. He sought after them. Let me just read a couple verses. He said in verse 5, when the king of Egypt was told that the people had escaped and his official changed their minds and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites escape and we have lost them as our slaves. The king got his war chariot and his army ready. He set out with all his chariots, including the 600 finest commanded by their officers. The Lord made the king stubborn and he pursued the Israelites who were leaving triumphantly. Verse 9, the Egyptian army with all the horses, chariots and drivers, they pursued, they sought after them and caught up with them where they were camped now. By the Red Sea near Pi Hiaroth and Baal Zephon. So once again, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And the first point, they couldn't understand. Why did God set us up this way? Did he set us up to be ambushed? Did he put us in this position? They didn't understand the situation. And they didn't understand that God was in the midst of all of this. And then verses 11 and verse 12. It says, then said Moses, weren't there great, weren't there, they said to Moses, weren't there any graves in Egypt? Did you have to bring us out here in the desert to die? Look what you have done by bringing us out of Egypt. You can tell they truly didn't understand that we serve a good God, that we serve a mighty God. That we serve a God that can deliver us. That we serve a God that can take care of us. That we serve a God that can bring us through all kind of challenges and situations in our lives. They didn't understand that. They started murmuring and said, why did you bring us out, out here? They were shaken with fear. It says, didn't we tell you before we left that this would happen? We told you to leave us alone. And let us go on being slaves of the Egyptians. It would be better to be slaves 
than to die here in Egypt. In verses, it would be better to be slaves than, than to die here in the desert. So here they are. Verses 11 to 12. They're shaken with fear. And now, after all that we talked about earlier, how they were abused, the living conditions, no clinical care. They were, they were misused. They were mistreated. They were beaten. Here they are now. After God delivered them, they're now considering running back to Egypt. Why? As I mentioned earlier, one of the things that will cause us to run back to our Egypts is fear. They were petrified, as the verse said. They were scared. They were shaking in their boots because they thought it was all over. So they said, we would rather run back to Egypt than die here in the desert. But then look at verse 13 and verse 14 again. Moses answered, don't be afraid. Stand your ground. And you will see what the Lord will do to save you today. The King James Version said, and you will see the salvation of the Lord. Somebody ought to say amen. Sometimes, again, he'll place us in situations and circumstances that otherwise we wouldn't recognize the salvation of the Lord. That otherwise we would credit ourselves or we'll credit somebody else. But he'll place us. In a situation. And then sometimes he just says stop. Stand still. And see. The salvation of the Lord. So in verse 13. Stop. And stand still. Moses told the people. Of Israel. To stop. And this is often the Lord's direction. In a time. Of crises. Watch this. Fear will tell you. And me to retreat and run back. Despair will cast you and me down. Keeping us from standing in patience. And Lord knows some of us need some patience. Will tell us to do something right now. Presumption will tell us to jump into the Red Sea before it is parted. Yet God simply told Israel. Stop and stand still and hold your place as he reveals the plan. Don't be afraid. Don't be ready to run back. If you are in the will of God, sometimes when stuff comes up in our lives and sometimes it seems to come out of nowhere, and we're afraid. Stand still. Just stop. And allow God to reveal his plan to you. He'll show you how he'll save you. He'll show you how he'll protect you when you're between a rock and a hard place. So there's some situations he's going to place us in. We're going to be shaking in our boots at time with fear. But this is telling us to stop and stand still. And then next, after we stop and stand still, it says also in verse 13, you shall see the salvation of the Lord. You'll see his might. You'll see his power. You'll see how he'll save us. You'll recognize that he truly never leaves us nor forsake us. Oh, he's trying to get us to understand today that when stuff comes up in our lives, don't run back to your Egypt. That Egypt that had you bound, uh, that Egypt that had you confused, don't run back to Egypt. Because as I said, keep your eye on him. Run forward. As you're running forward, you won't be stagnant. As you're running forward, you're not running backwards. So he is saying, stop. Stand still and see the salvation 
of the Lord. And then in verse 14, and I'm just about done, it says, the Lord will fight for you. And all you have to do is stand still. So again, the last point. He shall fight for you. He shall fight for me. So although it looks like the odds are against us, although it looks like things aren't going to work out, aren't you glad that he's a God that works when the odds are against us? So he is telling us today, there's nothing for you and me in Egypt. I called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. There's no reason to go run back. There's no reason to go back. There's no reason to slip back into darkness. Just trust me. Just stop. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And I shall fight for you. Come on, y'all. Let's give God some praise. He's a good God. He's a gracious God. And he's a loving God. So today, we're still talking about running. A couple of weeks ago or last week, we talked about let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If we keep our eyes stayed on Jesus, we won't run back to Egypt. Why? There's nothing there. For you. Let us bow for prayer. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that the word exodus, which means to exit, indicates that you will help us to exit out of some troubling situations. You will help us to exit when we're between a rock and a hard place. You'll help us to exit if we're in some difficult times in our life. So, Lord, let us not run back to what we used to do, but to trust you for what you're calling us to do. Let us recognize that the places that you called us out of, there's nothing there for us. But if we look forward and trust you. You said, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So again, there's nothing, not a thing for us in Egypt. Keep looking forward and don't look backwards. Let's bow for prayer again and the invitation. We thank God for this day. If you can bow your heads. Scripture makes it very clear. None is righteous, no, not one. That we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the penalty of sin is death. But Romans 5, 8 tells us that God demonstrated his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then he told us in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will, you shall be saved. This first invitation is about the kingdom. It's about becoming a member of the kingdom. Is there anyone here today for the first time in your life, you're going to say, I surrender to you, Lord. I want you as my Lord and as my Savior. I yield I yield. I throw up my hands in a surrender position. Come into my life. 
come into my heart. If there's someone today that's ready to make that decision, simply raise your hand wherever you are. Raise your hand and we'll have instructions for you in a few minutes. Just raise your hand and say, I want Jesus to come into my life, into my heart. For those that raised your hands, repeat this question with me, this, this, this statement, this prayer. Lord, I love you. Lord, I'm so thankful for you. Lord, I want to run towards you. I want you as my Lord and Savior. And you told me if I confess with my mouth, you, Jesus, as Lord, and I do, and if I believe in my heart, and I do, that God raised you, Jesus, from the dead, that I will be saved. I want to thank you for saving me. Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for coming into my life. And they said immediately, there was rejoicing in heaven. Come on, y'all. Immediately, there was celebrating for what God had done. That was the first invitation. It was to become a member of the kingdom. The second invitation is for someone who's looking for a church home. As I said last week, several people have been um, following us since COVID. We have had several people join the church. Many, several people have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And we're thankful that we're growing spiritually, that we're growing numerically. We're growing in all aspects. And we're so grateful for that, for those participating in Bible study and corporate prayer. We're, we're, we're growing together. But again, we're looking for someone who's looking for a church home. You can join several ways if you want to become part of this fellowship. If you believe this is a place where you can have a close, you can have a better understanding and have a closer relationship to Jesus. You can come by Christian experience. That means that you're saved, but you want to make Saints Memorial your home. You can come as a candidate for baptism. Again, you're saved, but you would like to be baptized. You can also come under watch care. This is the way several of our college students and several business people and people that have come into the area temporarily, they've relocated here for three, four, five months, but they want to be under the care of a pastor of a church. You can also come that way. Or it may be someone who has been away from the church for a period of time and you have re-engaged with the church since COVID. You've been following us virtually and participating in worship service virtually, and you want to become a member, this is your opportunity as well. So if you're interested, there's several ways you can do that. I gave those to you. And on the screen, you probably see some information. You can call this number, 610-525-5806. And one of the leaders one of the ministerial staff, somebody on the official board, or just one of the leaders will contact you. Also, you can also send an email. There's an email address I think you can see right now. Email the church and say, I want to become a member, and I, and I want to talk about how can I do that, what's the process, is there a new members class? And yes, there is. I have a, a couple people going through new members class even right now virtually. So yes, that can happen. So we say thank you to everyone today that have participated. We pray that, that we will understand that we can grow in Christ as we run to the next level. That next level, as I said, is more consistency, more passion, being more proactive, being more loving, being more caring, being more patient, and just doing it just intuitively. It just happens. It just happens. The Spirit is leading us to the next level. So before our next selection, we'll have benediction. I just want to thank everyone. Again, try your best to enjoy some time with your family. Be safe and careful out there with this pandemic. Um, this one is very contagious. Definitely follow the, the, the CDC guidelines. Uh, as I mentioned, I know everybody has their own prerogative, but 
I'm thankful to God for the two shots and a booster. I believe my situation would have been worse without the two shots and a booster. So I encourage everyone to, to, to take care of yourselves. As we said, use godly wisdom, pray, and stay in God's word. Amen? Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord shout hallelujah. Again, y'all, let's give God some praise. Let's stay for our closing selection.